Michael Malone himself. The only captain on the Chicago police force that can be bought. Take a walk. I remember the day you spiked Father O'Brien's altar wine with 100 proof whiskey. Whale of a sermon that day, wasn't it? Whale of a sermon. <laughs> You're not here to talk about the old times now, are you, Mike? What's really on your mind? I heard there was a meeting. A meeting where all the racket boys got together and carved this town up like it was a piece of beef in the stockyard. I heard you took part. Well, if I did, would I? I'd just up and tell the Chicago Police Department all about it. You're not talking to the police department, you're talking to me. Well, it happened. But you see, Mike, the Dagos, they, they're trying to concentrate on bootlegging, you see. They, they're trying to keep the peace. What do you know about this new guy, Capone? Well, not much. He's bright, you know, very bright, for a day ago. He's partnered up with Torrio. He's right out of nowhere. Now, how does somebody who comes right out of nowhere get so much power so quickly? Oh, Mike, you don't try to understand the Dagos. You don't try to understand how they run their outfits. I mean, they're, they're moved by the spirits, the phases of the moon. I got a very bad feeling about this fellow Capone. If you got anything that might help it nip it in the bud, give me a call. I'll see you in church, Mike. I'll see you in church, Dini. Uh, thank you for your support. Here's some uh, pamphlets and a couple of buttons. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Are we done yet? Just one more black. We're going to win this thing. We better. Morris seems to be delivering a resounding defeat to his challenger, Everett Nosek. They're winning everything Morris, everywhere. People, I just want to thank you all for your help. Don't be too discouraged. We knew going in that we were going up against a machine candidate, and in Chicago, Mob that's... candidate. Mob candidate is what he is, just like all the other winners tonight. I just wanted to thank you all. You did a splendid job. We canvassed over half the ward ourselves. We knew how the people were going to vote. It doesn't make any sense. Elliot, hi. What are you doing down here? It's called double marking. If the voter marks off the wrong candidate, they mark off his opponent, and the ballot is nullified. There were over 1,500 of these in the 43rd Ward alone. They also substitute tally sheets. They slip the voters uninitiated ballots. They pad the registration books with phony names and then vote into them. And there are other ways, too. You know this stuff goes on in Chicago all the time. So what do you do about it? Elliot, we do what we can do. I only have 64 agents in this office. Do you think this is the only mob activity we have to deal with? They're also shaking down unions. They're selling protection to legitimate businesses. They've got drug and vice operations everywhere. And now with the beer and booze money, they've got the wherewithal to buy the legal system. Before no, no, you start, no. let me tell you something else. Something that really breaks my heart. I don't think there are five agents in this office I can really trust. Federal agents are on the take? The money is big, Elliot. You have no idea how big.
probably the second most beautiful woman I've ever seen in my life. We understand that the Torrio Capone Empire is now the largest and richest in Chicago, that you provide over 50% of the booze sold in the city. Gentlemen, we live in a capitalist society. We're not Reds, we're capitalists. And when there's a demand in a capitalist society, it's the entrepreneur's job to meet that demand. Now, if people want to travel from point A to point B, and you're Flagler, you build them a railroad. If people want cars, you're Henry Ford, then you build them cars. Now, people suddenly need gasoline for these cars, and you happen to be Rockefeller, then you sell them gas. Supply and demand. I won't deny that I meet the demand of the people. I'm just a capitalist like those other guys. But, Mr. Capone, we're talking about an illegal business here. Surely you can't compare bootlegging to the car industry or the manufacturing of gasoline. What did our forefathers do when they found a law unjust? They dumped tea in the Boston Harbor. I mean, what do I do? I dump a little booze over Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Gang violence is down in Chicago, Al. I understand you're partially responsible for it. Partially. Jake, I hate violence. It's bad for business. That's why I do everything I can to keep it to a minimum in Chicago. Now, we no longer have gang wars here, shootings, murders, beatings, and other mayhem in our streets. That's because I take the time to mediate the disputes that lead to these things. I do this as a businessman and as a concerned citizen. An editorial by our publisher last week suggested that that may be the very reason the authorities really haven't come down on you, Al. Because you are a peacekeeper. Come down on me. Now, why would anybody want to come down on me? Anybody come down on Henry Ford? <laughs> <laughs> That's enough for now, you bums. All right, pick yourselves up a bottle of scotch on the way out. Get out of here. Thanks a lot, Al. Picture, Mr. Capone. Hey, come on, Tony. Oh, sorry, uh, right side profile, Mr. Capone. Kid. Listen to your mother and keep your nose clean, eh? Life is good. <laughs> well, well, look who's being invited to some of the swellest affairs. It's none other than the bootleg king himself, Scarface, Al Capone. This self-made man from the streets seems to be going legit as the official representative of the Chicago PD. His first duties include meeting Mussolini's goodwill ambassador, who's out on a world tour celebrating Italy's fascist state. And Al's goodwill goes way beyond politics. In Chicago's Little Italy, the big fella is giving freely to the St. Alexia School for Boys. Some people don't like Al, but ask what this little guy thinks. You weren't hitting him, were you? Catherine. We don't live in America anymore. We live in a sovereign country called Chicago, Illinois. You're a strange man. You carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. I guess I just grew up thinking it wasn't going to be the way it is. Suppose I'll adjust. Maybe the fact that it bothers you as much as it does is one of the reasons I love you. Would you marry me if I asked you to? I'll marry you under one condition. Do you stop obsessing about things you can't change? No, I mean it, Elliot. You're gonna drive yourself crazy. And me along with you. You're right. And I promise I'll quit. Marry me, Catherine. Ball. 
Tell your boss that no good lion pig Jenna. This is just the beginning. We got trouble, Al. What's going on? The Jenna's. You better get your codes. Yes, we are going to war. Last week, the Irish began hijacking our trucks. They've got ten. If they want war, he has got it. Why would anybody want war? War's the last thing that anybody wants. Uh, those Irish pigs are hijacking my livelihood. Angelo, calm down. We will go to O'Banion. We'll find out what his problems are. We'll take care of it for you. In the interest of maintaining our good relationship, I will give you one day. One. No more. Angelo Jenner came to us. He said, uh, you've been uh, hijacking his rolling stock. But I have, you know. What the hell for? What are you trying to do, start a war? Well, now, if you remember, I believe it was John Watt three years ago, we made an agreement. We agreed that the Jenners would stop their horror run on operations on the north side. Well, they're blossoming and blooming like a bunch of damn dandelions. You got a problem like that, why don't you come to us? You know we've always been able to deal with the Jenners. Well, you know, Al, last night, as I was planning for war, me and the wife had a discussion. We decided the Jenna's gonna have the whole damn thing on the north side. They can burn it down to the ground for all I care, because I'm quitting. I'm getting out, John. You know, if you remember, John, what's the one we wrote? The rackets here in Chicago run by honorable men, but not anymore. So I'm selling everything. I believe I'll be moving to the beautiful state of Colorado. What can we say, Dini? We'll miss you. Well, isn't that sweet of you? Well, the Stevens Brewery, that'll be for sale. Would you be interested? Come to settle a gang war and walk away with the best brewery in the Midwest. Go figure it. He's getting tired, huh? Could happen to anybody. Someday it'll happen to all of us. Yes, I'd like to be speaking to Captain Mike Malone. You can tell him it's old friend Dini, the old boy. Half a million dollars. It's a damn good price, too. You know, I have over a million dollars invested in that place. And the near beer license just been renewed. As your legal representative, I suggest you count this before signing over the deed, Mr. O'Bannon. Mm. Be my guest. Horse feathers. Well, then, fellas, you just bought yourselves a brewery. Now, I'd like to take you over and introduce you to my brewmeister. You go ahead, Johnny. I promised Sonny I'd take him to Marshall Fields. See you later, fellas. Good doing business with you, Dini. Well, Al, you know, you really should meet this guy. He's one hell of a brewmeister. What can I say, Dini? I promised my kid. I'll catch up with you later. All right, Al. See you, boys. Now, boys, have a look at the kettles. First rate, all the way from Germany. Bought and paid for myself. Police! Nobody moves! 
It's the real McCoy. All right. In violation of the Volstead Act, you're all under arrest. No. What's the matter, fellas? Did you not get your envelopes this week? <coughs> New cop on the beat. They confiscated 13 trucks. They busted the place all to hell. They even took Johnny's new Chrysler. No, I'm telling you, Al. It was a setup. Oh, Ben. He's already been released because he could prove he didn't have any interest in the place. Tell me about the cop. No. Oh. Turns out him and O'Banion, they went to school together. And he's not on anybody's payroll. He's clean. I'll tell you what you do. I want this guy busted down. You go to the chief, you go to the commissioner, you go to the mayor, you got to. I want him busted down so far, he ain't ever gonna be heard from again. What are we gonna do about O'Banion? We gonna go to war? We can't go to war. Just take care of the cop for me, okay, Frank? Put Jen on the phone. Buongiorno. Yes, whatever that means. Mr. Jenna, how very nice to see Church denied him a burial on consecrated ground. No more Catholic a man ever walked this earth. He never cheated on me, Michael. He always came home at night. I know, Viola. George, Jaime, my deepest condolences, fellas. Yeah, sure. Look, Dini and I, we had our differences. But I love the guy. I just hope that peace can prevail between us, gentlemen. Everybody wants peace. Reynolds, Internal Affairs. How can I help you? found in your desk. It's my payoff money. The bills are marked. You're suspended pending a full investigation. If there was money found in my desk, it was put there by somebody else. <laughs> Save it for the hearing, Malone. Just give me your gun and your badge. It'll be about two hours, Tommy. There they are. Let's go.
to you, Alphonse. And if I survive, I'll return to Naples to live out my life. If I die, I ask two things of you. Anything, Johnny. Anything. You execute bugs more than that. And then that Paula Kaimi wise. I swear my son's life, Johnny. I swear. Daddy. Daddy. I'm quite surprised you decided not to finish law school, Ellie. You're so close. I just don't have any interest in law anymore. What kind of work are you going to pursue then, do you know? Some kind of junior corporate position, I suppose. Maybe with one of the insurance companies. It's a growth industry. Ever thought about law enforcement? That certainly is a growth industry too, isn't it? No. No, I made a promise. I'm just gonna be a good husband provider. Got a family now. Go ahead. All right, we just found out that Jaime Weiss has a meeting with Jack Zuda at 7.45 tonight. Now, they're meeting in this office building right next to O'Banion's old flower shop here. This is the entrance we'll most likely be using. Now, across the street in this rooming house, we have two guys here and here. That allows us fire coverage all throughout this area. Now, one was superior here. We have two more guys. And that gives us coverage from here to here. Now, there ain't no way this guy gets into or out of this building alive. I got one thing to say, and I'm only going to say it once. After this guy's dead, I don't want anyone to quit shooting. I want this guy turned into me, Frank. You hear me? <laughs> They're tearing up all over. Oh, look at that arrangement. Isn't it pretty? You know, gangsters used to own this place. Don't start on gangsters. Not on our only night out. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. Don't, don't, look. Don't even look. Don't look. <laughs> Take me home, Elliot. Please. Hey, over here. The kid's been shot. <sighs> I gotta see if I can go help, Catherine. job with perennial life. Why? Because an old friend of mine, a man named Louis Basile, lost a kid to those bastards the other night. Can you get me a job here? Goodbye, Johnny. I love you. You're a good boy. 
vorher. You don't have to worry about nothing, Johnny. What's he say? He wants to meet. Gentlemen, the other night I had a nightmare like a small child. What caused the nightmare was an editorial I read in the Tribune. The editorial was in support of Matt Deaver when he said that the only way to end the violence in Chicago was by bringing in federal troops. Now we're talking about federal troops to fight us, to fight every man in this room. What scares me is that this could really happen. We've gone too far, gentlemen. We made a lot of people angry. And we've lost a good deal of our public support. Now we either end the violence between us or the government's gonna end it for us. Salud. I don't disagree. Snoke, you did good. It's the only thing to do. Hey, Frank, remind me. I want to give a quarter million dollars to be Bill Thompson's re-election campaign. Quarter of a million? You're nuts. Frank, we want to continue to run the city. We got to get the mayor back in our pocket. Yeah, I guess. I'm just glad this whole war's over with. Yeah, well, there's still one thing I want to take care of. I swear to Johnny, I'd get both whites and Marine. No, oh, you can't do that. This whole thing would blow up all over again. What if it wasn't us? Moran's got a lot of enemies. If it was cops, for instance. We got a lot of guys who look like cops that Moran wouldn't recognize. You never know what had them. God, it's almost Valentine's Day. I gotta pick May up something. an optometrist. Moran. We'll take care of Moran, man. Big Bill. Do 
to his honor. <laughs> to his honor, Big Bill Thompson. May he stay mayor forever. <laughs> matter? Nothing, Adam. Go on back to sleep. <laughs> Hello, Mr. President. You can't call me that until the inauguration, Frank. I'm sorry, sir, Mr. Hoover. Did you find out who's living in that house with the party going on? Uh, it's that mobster from Chicago. Mm. Al Capone. I'll send someone over there. No, 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 don't do that. What I want you to do is you call J. Edgar in the morning and you tell him that I want that guy put in prison. Three nights, that son of a bitch has kept me up. Yes, sir. At the behest of President Herbert Hoover, we've committed to ending organized crime and lawlessness in Chicago. My name is E.Q. Johnson, and I'll answer your questions now. Who will head up the task force here? Uh, Agent Alexander Jamie will be picking the leader. The agents that are actually in the field will remain anonymous for obvious reasons. Mr. Johnson, it's been widely reported that many of your agents here in Chicago are as corrupt as many members of the police force. Any comment? I assure you that the agents assigned to this program will be of the highest quality. The mob won't be able to touch these men. Do you have, any have, have you found these untouchables yet? No, we're in process on that. Good luck. That'll be all, gentlemen. Although he's young, his courage and his honesty I can personally vouch for. Want to meet him? Elliot, can you come here for a minute? I want you to meet Emerson Q. Johnson, United States District Attorney. Hello, sir. I understand you're married and have a child, miss. Yes, sir. That's right. Are you sure that as a family man you want to be involved in this? It could be a very dangerous assignment. I want this job more than anything I've ever wanted in my life. Sir, I won't sleep until we've gotten our city back. I think you'll do some 
Start assembling your team. That was said. Now, how do I got to I made my choices. Good. Number one, Tony Pagano, out of the Detroit office. Exemplary arrest record, unmarried, clean as a whistle. Aside from being a crack agent, he also has another skill. He drives midget race cars when he's not piling up arrests. I figured we may have occasion to use a fast driver. Number two, Paul Robbins out of St. Louis, ex-fighter pilot for the Army in France. He worked as a district attorney before joining the Treasury. George Steelman, full-blooded Cherokee Indian, ex-Carlisle University football star. He's out of the Omaha office, only been on the job a year, but already he's got an outstanding arrest record. And he's an expert wiretap. I figured we could definitely use that. My fourth choice is something of a wild card. I thought I'd tell you about it before I proceeded. Do you remember Louis Basile? Well, the one whose son was killed when Jaime Weiss was shot? He worked for the mob. He absolutely hates them now. He wants to help. I know there's no question about his loyalty. And nobody knows the bad guys better than he does. I trust your judgment. Before you go, I've got kind of a wild card myself. Next cop I know. Another guy with something of a troubled past. Alex? Mike? Get up, get up. So, this is the young college kid you've been telling me about. Elliot Ness, Mike Malone. Your lord, you're stealing him out of the cradle now. Welcome to Chicago. I'm Elliot Ness. We're going to be working together. Anybody who doesn't like long hours for no additional pay better raise a hand right now. Good. Mr. Capone, Capone, Bill Jacobs, The Daily News. How you doing, Bill? Welcome back to Chicago, sir. Thanks, buddy. It's good to be back. While you were away, it was announced that a federal task force is being assembled here, and you've been targeted. So what else is new? Some guy drops dead in the street of a heart attack. Some black cat has great kidneys. Who do you think they blame? Me. Does it scare you, Mr. Capone? Why should it scare me? A lot of people talk. You listen to talk on my business, you're finished. Do you feel you've been unfairly singled out by the feds? Of course I've been unfairly singled out if what you're saying to me is true. You know what I ought to do? I ought to go down there, have a meeting with these feds, and straighten everything out. Yeah, a little money goes a long way in Chicago, doesn't it, Snarky? Anyway, that's enough for now, fellas. It's good to see you, and it's good to be back home. Staring at me. Was I? Are you a wise guy? Who are you? Who, me? I'm nobody. Who are you? You got a real problem, don't you, college boy? I'm out of college, and no. I don't have a problem. You do. What right now? Some kind of a nut. Yeah. A bonehead. A real bonehead. <laughs> this town is full of boneheads. <laughs> That's what I love about this town. God, I love Chicago! I don't know what they taught you at federal school, but... When I studied surveillance, the first rule was never make eye contact with a subject. The second was never engage him in conversation because that way he will almost certainly notice you. What was all that about? I wanted to see what he looked like. I wanted to hear his voice. Straight out of the cradle. I can tell this is going to be a long haul. A long haul it may be, Mr. Malone. But beginning tomorrow, we're gonna start doing some good. Mm -hmm. 